How do you guys, it's Luke at Geek Gaming, and in this video, I'm gonna play with something that I've never played with before, on camera live. You guys say I don't do enough, like, playing with new products and random things. So this is one of them videos. I'll catch you after this. So guys, this video has come about because a lot of people don't like the fact that I use a lot of plaster for rocks because it gets heavy on boards. When you're building fixed boards or terrain, I don't mind a bit of weight. Um, one, because it doesn't slide around or move around on your board when you're using it. And two, it, it just feels better. It feel, I like heavy bases. I mean, I, I play Kings of War with full metal models on bases full of slate and all sorts. So <laughs> I don't mind a bit of weight. But I'm building a couple of boards that are going overseas and I need to keep the weight down. Even though I'm palletizing the boards and everything, the lighter I can make the board, the better it is for the customers and it's, it's cheaper postage for them. So I thought I'd have a bit of research and I'd try a product that I've never used before. This might not work, I've got no idea. So let's get the camera set up and let's uh, see what it's like first hand because I'm pretty excited because I've never done it but we'll see you in a bit. Right, so the product I'm gonna be using is Tip Top Foam Clay. Um, I found this on eBay, it was £14.99, I think. Um, doesn't make it that doesn't make it that cheap. However, if it is lightweight and it is robust, which we'll see in this video, it is a good option. Um, 15 quid gets you the equivalent of, say, like a kilo of Das Clay. This weighs 300 grams. I'd say that's about the same. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press mold it into the Woodland Scenic Rock Molds. I'm gonna do a couple of different types of doing it. I'm gonna just press it in, pull it out, leave it to dry. I'm gonna push them in, let it dry, see if it sticks in the mold. We're gonna have a proper play. It does say, um, craft and sculpts like clay uh, and allowed to dry for 12 to 72 hours, depending on the density. Um, and when it dries, it dries like foam. So let's get it out and let's have a play. Let's see what it feels like. Ooh, it's greasy, really greasy. And it's not, it doesn't tear. It's very stretchy and stringy, look at that like chewing gum. Um, first impressions, it doesn't feel like clay. Um, it feels more like, um, what's the word? Like a, It's almost like Play-Doh, but Play-Doh pulls apart easy, this doesn't. Um, it's like a cross between Play-Doh and blue tack. It smells a bit like gunge, like kid's gunge, but it's very different. Um, I don't know how to describe it, it's just greasy and weird. Um, and very lightweight. I mean, I can hardly tell I've got that in my hand. <laughs> um, what we're gonna do with the rock molds, what we're gonna do is because it says 24 hour to 72 hour depending on density. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press it in as hard as I can, but keep it quite thin. Um, and when we keep it thin, we'll just see how that, how much strength it's got when it's dry. Um, so we'll do that one first. And to capture detail, like when you're doing press molds, I don't know whether you've done press molds before, um, but what you need to do is literally just put like your green stuff in a press mold and push it in as hard as you possibly can. So it captures as much detail as possible. And that's all I'm doing with this, uh, but I'm only applying it thinly so it dries quicker. And then we can see how strong it is when you press it, when it's up against something or whether we're gonna to have to fill the back maybe with polystyrene or some sort of filler foam or other other things to make them stronger so we don't use too much of this because it's not the cheapest. Um, but that's gone in there really well. It's really easy to use. Um, so that's good. It might be, might be nice to see how easy it is to sculpt like put it on like a foam, like on some foam and maybe sculpt in some bricks and things with it. That might be something we could look at in the future if this comes out well. So it's like a really, it makes really lightweight, strong buildings hopefully, but we'll see. Right, so we've pressed that one in. What I'm gonna do with this one is I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab a lot of it and I'm just gonna stick it in and let it dry for a couple of days and see how that sets up. Um, I've got no idea, so I want to try all possibilities and see how which comes out the best. So all I'm doing is just getting a, a big handful and then pressing it in as hard as I can. 
uh, trying to capture as much detail as possible. What one might find is it's probably better to do a thin amount first, capture the detail, then just fill it up later, but we'll see. We'll see how it comes out. And just press as much as that in as we can. Really interesting seeing this, because this stuff's really, it's somewhat different. Right, and the next one, on this big one here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm just gonna press it in and then peel it out. Um, because I don't know whether this is going to stick to it or not. Um, I don't want to use any sort of silicon spray, I don't want to use any sort of mould release because I don't know whether that will react with the clay because I've got literally no idea what it is. There's no descriptions of what you can and can't do with it. I've not looked online, I just want to play with it, okay? So let's put some in and let's press it in as hard as we can and let's pull it out and see if the detail's still there without stretching it too much because it is very, very stretchy if you've seen. So all I'm doing is just same as the other two, but I'm gonna just, I want to give myself enough that I can pull on without stretching it. Um, so we'll see how this comes out and we'll have a look at the detail closer up. Too much pressure because I don't wanna make the back of the mold press into, like lose, squash the detail and make it all different shapes. I want to keep the shape original. So I'm just pressing best I can. Right, now that's in there, I'm not I'm just gonna peel it out now and see if I can get see if I can peel it out nicely because it's very greasy. Um so hopefully it should hold the detail still. Um anywhere where there's complicated undercuts though, it's, yeah. Where there's complicated undercuts, it's not doing it. Um it's sticking and it's sticking this it's sticking, so I'm not gonna be able to pull this out until it's dry. Um I'll try again. The only problem with the undercuts you see is it once you get the once you get this clay in there it's going to be hard to get them out because it's going to grab in there um so we'll try again uh, but what i'll do is i'll try popping it out and see if that works it's because it's so pliable it's really nice to work with um i just hope this works because otherwise it's 15 quid down drain so let's Turn it upside down, the mould, and turn it inside out and see if that relieves some of the other bits that are like the really severe undercuts. That's a bit better. We'll get in there. Uh, no. No, it's not working, but on a less complicated mold, you could, on a less complicated mold that's not got as many undercuts, you could just press it and pull it out because the detail on there is really nice. So as you can see, the detail's there. I mean, it's got it, so on a less complicated mold, it would work, um, but with it being a rock and there's really bad deep undercuts and stuff, we're gonna have to leave this in the mold uh, so it's a bit more robust for when we pull it out. Um, so what I'll do is I'll I'll apply some more um, and let these dry and then we'll come back to it once it's dry. Right, so because the press moulding sort of worked apart from it being a complicated undercut, you can't peel it out till it's gone off, I thought it'd be a good time to try a couple of texture rollers. I like using texture rollers for speed and quickness and everything else. What I'm going to do is I'm going to apply them to some foam board but one of them we'll, we'll just paint up on the foam board and see how it is for taking paint and how it looks and how durable it is for play. The idea is, is when you're playing on it, especially if it's plaster or clay, they do chip, especially with the bases if you're dragging them across or you're chucking tanks across them and stuff. It, it eventually chips to clay and things. Now with the foam having some flexibility to it, it might be a lot more durable for gameplay. So what I thought I'd do is I'd I'd do a couple of tests with this. Plus, we'll do one on and one off, and we'll see how flexible it actually is to see if we can have some rollout roads with this stuff, um, which might be quite interesting. Again, it's not gonna be cheap, but if you really want some rollout roads, we could possibly do it with this stuff. So let's find out. So, I'll get a nice small amount out. One thing I will say, what I'm finding with this stuff, is it picks up everything. Uh, so when you're using it, make sure that you in a clean area when, you, when you're when working with it. The rollers come in. 
try and get it nice and flat. Right, so once we've got that all laid out and nice and nice and flat, we're gonna use the roller. Now, when you're using it on green stuff or milliput or clay or any other sort of product like that, it's normally best to coat this with something. Now, I don't wanna add any water, I don't wanna add any grease or anything to this, because this is, like I've said, it's rather greasy to start with. So I'm just gonna go in dry. <laughs> so let's uh, roll this out and let's see how it captures this detail. See if it pulls. Tell you what, that's impressive. That is the easiest roller I've done with any product. Because um, usually when you've got clays, it sticks and it pulls. If you're using green stuff, that's sticky and pulls. Milliput's okay, but again, it can stick and pull. That was the most effortless rolling to capture detail that I've done. I hope this works because that's bang on is that. Um, I hope it comes out nice once it's uh, painted. But we'll see. Let me do the other one uh, with the cobblestone and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll have a look at these when they're dry. See you in a bit. So it's next day. Uh, I've left things to dry. I've, I've put it on the radiator. I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I'm impatient and I don't want to wait three days. Um, so we'll see how it's come out. When it's dry, it feels like, you know them eggs that you get in your Haribo? Feels like that. It pops out a lot easier um, than yesterday when it was wet. However, I don't know if you can see that well, but where there's any severe undercuts, it does pull it off um, and they're in there, they're not coming out. So any deep recess sort of detail, We've lost it. Um, just uh, adding, because I forgot to say this in the video, on the rock molds where it's actually catching and pulling the foam is usually where it'd catch and break the plaster off when you're demolding them when they're not completely dry. Because to get plaster to be completely dry in a mold does take a good few hours, whereas you can demold them after about 20 minutes, but you do get some breakages and stuff. But because when it's plaster, you have like a nice stone finish anyway, it, you don't notice it. Now, we'll see whether that's the case with the foam, uh, because if you don't notice it, then I'll just leave that in there. So if I end up using this stuff over and over again, then you won't have the rock pulling the same bit out all the time. We should be able to demold them quicker. Um, but we'll, we'll try that later on. Right, back to the normal video. But the detail on that rock is awesome. And look at that. Um, spongy, soft. So I suppose once we put that in some polystyrene or onto some polystyrene, that's gonna give it the strength um, so that's the one that's hollow at the back. So it does, I mean, you can lay it flat. You can, it folds very easily. Um, so let's get the other one out and let's see the more solid one and let's see how that one holds up. See if it's a little bit thicker. See how this comes out. Eee. So yeah, deep undercuts are not great for this stuff because it's not that robust. It does pull them off, but with it being a rock texture, it's not too bad. Uh, it's just any severe undercuts and it will, we are left with some of it in the mold still. Um, to be fair, I don't think that's totally set either. So we should really leave, I might leave this one in another day or so and we'll test that one. Um, but. Yeah, it's not fully cured in the middle. It's still pretty soft inside, but the detail on the ex exterior is really nice. So we are onto a bit of a winner here. Um, let's have a look at them roads and paths. Now this is, this is nice. That is very nice. It's held the detail well. It's pretty robust and I bet once we've put some varnish and paint and stuff on there, that's gonna be a nice hard surface. Even though it's spongy, 
Um, I don't think that's going to chip or anything. You've got really nice detail, plus it's really resistant. And there's the other one that I did, the brick one. So where we've got these drops in, I like this because you can put water effects in um, and get like put, uh, puddles and things. So what we'll do is we'll paint these up. We'll see what these look like with a bit of dry brush and a bit of paint. And then we'll build these rock molds into like a little dio um, and we'll paint them up and see how the paint and dry brush and look painted and see if we can see if it looks any different to the rock molds. Catch you after this. Right, so the first thing that I noticed is really heat resistant. Uh, hot glue doesn't melt it. Um, I'm just building up the inside with some polystyrene and to, to add some structure and strength to the rock, which surprisingly did a very good job. And then I'm just using it like I would normally use a plaster rock. What I found is the modeling compound works exactly the same as it does with plaster. When it's near the foam, it sort of pulls the moisture out of it. So it's very, very similar. It's almost like a straight, swap of using plaster and the foam it doesn't feel any different when you're using the compound to build up around it so for that it's very natural um what i found was when i was working with it um i started to paint the ground brown as i normally do and i spilled a bit of the brown paint down the front of the rocks as you'll see as i'm doing it now and it started to absorb into the foam very much like plaster However, what I did notice is it had to be quite strong for it to work. It won't. It, it doesn't take on the colour the same as uh, as plaster. But what I did is I made some mixes of colour a little bit stronger, less less water than I would use in plaster, and it worked quite well. I need to play with this ratio a bit, but the overall look, just leopard spotting onto the foam, looked as good as plaster. I just need to work with the ratios to get a better look out of it. Um, but it's really impressive. I'm quite happy with it. The other benefit to it absorbing paint is it means if it does pull or, or you knock it or you stretch it at any point, um, it's absorbed a bit of the colour so the white's not going to show through very much like plaster if you wash it. it doesn't chip, when it chips you don't notice as much because it's taken some of the colour on. So that's just a benefit. And one thing I also found out is it's um, resistant to spray cans. I'm pretty happy with it. I mean this piece weighs nothing. Um, I used about 100 grams of, well, less than 100 grams because I threw some away, so I probably used about 80 grams of modeling compound, which if I was doing this on a board uh, and it was going to be a complete build, being as light as possible, I'd do more work with the polystyrene, uh, so I'll probably use a lot less compound uh, to make it even lighter, but even still, this weighs about a quarter of what it would normally weigh, um, so I'm very happy with it. As you can see on this uh, single piece that I've just painted up, it's just awesome. <laughs> it's, it's just, yeah. This one was painted properly. Um, when I said properly, it was sprayed with a spray can and then it was just dry brushed up, which it takes all the detail well. Um, so you can paint it both ways. What I would advise though is leopard spotting with it because if you do get any sort of tears or rips in it, um, like that, for example, I mean, I had to quite pull that quite a bit. I mean, you can pull it, but you've got to be rough with it. And I don't, to be fair, that's not even properly cured inside. It's only been a day. It does say up to three days. So where it's really deep, it's not fully cured inside yet. Um, so yeah, once that's fully cured, it's going to be a lot better. Now, the biggest surprise for me was these the road pieces. Now, obviously I've done a terrible paint job on this, but they're gonna be really strong. They've got give, so if you were to put them on like some cloth, there's plenty of give because it's nice and thin. I mean, that's on some thick uh, foam board, about five mil foam board, but there's loads of give there. Um, and literally, when you've got paint and that on, dragging your nails across, catching it, there's nothing coming off, none of the paint, and all this was sprayed and dry brushed up. So it's a really nice, firm, hard way of doing your roads so they're not gonna chip. So this is a find, just for the roads. Um, the bricks, exactly the same. I should have rolled it a bit firmer because the detail's a bit soft in areas, uh, but it's just where I've put it a bit thinner than the rest. But apart from that, guys, we're on to a winner, as in that's a really 
as in that's a really nice detailed piece just say it's been rolled quick um i'm very happy with it i will do a lot more tests and play with it before i actually use it on a commission piece but for first impressions um i'm really impressed let's just tear it off this foam backing and just see if it will roll up it's actually taken the paper off so anything porous it's going to stick to okay um but that's so that's it just on the paper backing let's roll it up so fully rolled up now it's torn torn a little bit on one of the where it's been a bit thinner um but it does do it so maybe if we do it a bit thicker we'd probably get some more longevity out of it something to play with so if we're going to do roads I'll probably make it just a touch bigger because that's about a mil and a half thick two mil thick so if that was maybe three mil thick we might not have that um but yeah it's 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 pretty strong so i am quite happy with it what do you think? Put in the comments below, guys, because it is something new. It is something that I had no idea about. I'm really happy that I can use it as just normal rock moulds and leopard spot it. It takes paint really well. It's durable. You can prod it, poke it, kick it around, and it's not going to show any signs of chipping or wear. Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. What I've found from the rock moulds is that having just doing the thin cast in the shell and then using the uh, the foam in the back is the best way of doing it uh, the thick ones take too long to dry there's no way i'm leaving that in a mold for two days um so doing the thinner press mold and then filling the back full of polystyrene is going to be the best way of doing it um so probably every couple of hours you can pull them out of the mold so i really like it guys it seems to be a really good product uh, so far anyway I'm going to do some more tests I'm going to do play with it a bit more but what do you think put in the comments below let me let's have a talk and discussion about it what is there any pros or cons that you've seen just from this video um it would have been nice remember to leave this to completely dry and give it a proper like test um but I'm running out of time but I will do some more and have some more plays and I will come back to this and when I do the gaming tables uh, for the commissions and if I end up using this I will do it as a video so you can see th th how different I'd I work with it and how light I can actually make the tables uh, but still strong any comments anything below let's have a good talk about it because stuff like this it's new it's experimental any ideas for me to try and have a play with you know let's let's try some great ideas let's try some bad ideas let's do things we shouldn't do with it let's just have a good go and i'll just document it as i go in, in my future videos if you've liked this video guys don't forget to like share and subscribe tell me what you think to the video below um if you want to support the channel and keep me doing videos like this check out my shop uh, as you know i'm a full scenic supplier so I, you can have anything from your flocks to your super glues to your paints your brushes whatever you need for your terrain building if you want to spot me any other way, there's Patreon and there's also um, uh, and there's also Element Games where you can buy all your Games Workshop and all your other third-party miniatures uh, from their store. If you use the link below, I get a cut of that, which really helps support the channel and helps me buy things like this to do these little videos. All right, guys, thanks for watching, thanks for tuning in, and I'll uh, I'll catch you again for the next video. Love, love, love. Howdy guys, it's Luke at Luke's... Ah, oh, fuck, it's not, is it? Right, so guys, what's this video's come about? <laughs> Can't get my words out. Took like an entire... <coughs> Cries Corona. It's in its state, my air. Oh, I'll look play. I just can't get my words out today. I'm just talking to myself. <clears throat> oh, I've not fucking recorded all. I can't work in these conditions. I can't. The human torch was denied a bank loan. Unique New York. Unique New York. Can't say it. You're gonna carry on making noise. Yeah.